we have here, oh this is a uh, Dave WM by the way, it's a Motorola B1000W AM FM stereo receiver. This is a really cool little set. It's got these satellite speakers which fold away like this when it's not in use. Typically you would operate it with this closed of course. It's a very attractive little cube. The speakers mount on these hinges, they just lift off. And this is actually where the electrical connection for the speakers is made. The set is AM FM stereo. Right now I currently have it in the uh, FM stereo mode. It has a AFC function, so you'll notice the stereo light goes out and the sound gets distorted, but it'll pull back in with the AFC. It's really a strong AFC, too. I mean, it's almost hard to find a blank spot. It really pulls in stations strongly. Typically, the best way to do it would be, of course, to tune the best signal and then engage it so that it simply doesn't drift. Plus, if you want to get a weaker station, you'd want to disengage it because it'll just jump right over a weak station in favor of a stronger one. I'm sure if I understand the concept of AFC, all it basically does is looks at the voltage off the, um, off the uh, ratio detector I think this uses and you basically want that voltage to be zero uh, out of the ratio detector center tap of this transformer and any imbalance on either side of the IF frequency will cause that voltage to be off. It takes that voltage, it goes to a very variable diode, a, a very actor, which changes the voltage and acts like a sort of like a solid state capacitor and what it does is it retunes the oscillator in the uh, front end of this thing to try to hold that IF frequency right at 10.7 megahertz or zero from the um, ratio detector. Yes. Maybe that's a little bit boring to some folks, but I just figured I'd lay it out. You've got the uh, straight FM mode, which eliminates the uh, stereo effect. It goes into mono. There's the stereo. I got an AM section over here. Recently, of course, no. Okay. So you have that. Let's go back to. Uh, oh, you have a phono. There's a there's phono inputs in the back, left and right. Uh, it's got a pretty sensitive front end. It uses a um, a line cord antenna. Uh, it uses one of those little. I don't know, you know what I'm talking about. It's a uh, the tuned inductor style tuners on the FM. It's not a variable capacitor. It's actually a tunable inductor. I think it's made in Germany. I think it was a commonly used front end uh, on a lot of uh, early. Uh, tube equipment. Use a single tube RF amp and a uh, converter and an oscillator. And just a little pull string that pulls in and out is how you change the inductor. It's spring loaded. And that pull string wraps around the variable capacitor. I have a little shaft on the back of the variable capacitor. So the, the variable capacitor for the AM is only function for the FM is to provide a shaft that you can wrap that cord around. That cord pulls the inductor and changes the uh, tuning of it. They're really kind of cool. Uh, some other notable features of this, well, the satellite speakers are backed up with a central low frequency speaker. Now this is kind of interesting because this central speaker is actually both channels and it's, you know, it's got a, um, it's got a uh, capacitor in there that's allows to only, it's just a low pass cap and it only gets the lower frequencies. The single channel which is really both channels combined is done in a kind of unique manner. There's actually two single ended amps for the stereo. So you got a 6BM8 which is actually a triode pentode but the pentode section of that 6BM8 drives a single ended amplifier to one speaker. The other 6BM8 drives a single ended amp to the other speaker but there's a phase inverter involved so it switches phase and here's where it gets interesting. Okay, you've got a phase inverted channel here, 
compared to this. They're both connected through a, a, a um, transformer to drive the center speaker, but it's set up as a, a push-pull. So you got a single-ended amp, inverted single-ended amp, combine those two together through a single transformer to get a push-pull amplifier to drive the single speaker. That's really pretty neat. You know, it's, and it works surprisingly well. You'd be surprised that with the, um, the high frequencies coming through these speakers give you good stereo separation and to combine lower frequencies through here, you know, they're not that, it's, it's not that, it's, it works well. I guess I won't try to elaborate more on that other than say it works well. It's got a nice uh, wood cabin, I think it's a walnut, plywood with uh, walnut uh, veneers, I guess I should say. And uh, the only thing that this thing took, took this thing running was, um, I think I might have had a snow cap, one of the tubes. Uh, it has the original filter cap. I replaced a couple paper caps that were suspicious. A lot of disc caps in this. There really wasn't a whole lot to go wrong. Uh, even the tone control, I think, was uh, mostly disc caps. So it's a pretty reliable set. It didn't really take much to uh, to get it working. Oh, and I think I had to do an alignment on it. It was uh, it wasn't very sensitive. And the multiplexer wasn't working so well, so I did regular.